<laughs> so next, <laughs> our case study is uh, light colors, Germany. Okay, uh, the role of branding in marketing sports for all sexy. Uh, please welcome Mr. Alex Ivanovi. Good afternoon. Well, first of all, I'm deeply honored to be um, invited to speak at this 25th Tafisa World Congress, and I would like to uh, thank the great Tafisa team for this opportunity. Um, my name is Alex Jovanovic, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Red Colors in Germany. Um, Red Colors is an international creative agency, and since, since 2012, we have specialized in creating intelligent and unique communication solutions for clients around the globe. Um, we work with UNICEF, AT&T, um, New York University, National Geographic, and of course uh, with our friends at Tapisa. So why I'm here today? The reason I'm here today is to talk about our area of daily work, our area of expertise, which is design and branding, and how and the role of branding in marketing sports for all um, to attract more sponsors, partners, and supporters to the field. So basically, what, what do we need to do to brand this kind of more charitable or non-for-profit cause to raise more awareness? So what actually is branding? Let's start with this. Well, there are numerous ways to look at this topic, and there's a variety of definitions for what actually is branding and how to define it. But for a cause or for something like Sport for All, which is less profit-oriented, I would like to start with two quotes that best describe this term or best introduce it for today's session. So your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. The truth is that your brand tells so much more than you would ever want to tell if you would have to clearly articulate who you are, what you do, what your goals are, where you want to go, and so on. It really speaks for yourself when you're not in the room. It speaks so much more than you would ever want to tell. And your branding is your design. It's, it's built of million pieces of your design on your website, on your social media, on, based on the people that speak for you, in your presentations, in your logo, it's everywhere. So the next quote is, design is the silent ambassador of your brand. No matter if you tend to or not, your branding is how people perceive your company. So no matter what you say, what your slogans or your claims are on your website, People will still perceive you based on how you look. It is often neglected how, how much visual we are, how our brains work, and how much we use just the visual appearance to define what we think of the person or the company in front of us. Therefore, when we talk about branding, branding spots for all today, we really need to make sure that our branding, or what, how we would like to others, that others see ourselves, that it follows a purpose. Actually, your branding does not need to work for yourself. It needs to work for those companies, for your target audience. You do not have to ask yourself how I would like to be seen on my website. It's, it's much more what how would you like that other people see you? Or what do you need to convey so that other people or partners will come to you and say, let's make, let's make business, let's, let's work together for this good cause? So you basically have to fill in the gap what your target audience is, what's, what's the organization, what's the non-for-profit company that you would like to um, make aware that you are here, that you are in sports for organization and answer a few questions. So, 
why should they choose you? Why should they cho choose you as spot for all organization? Why not someone else? What's your ad what is your added value? Is this measurable? Do you have any metrics? If you define what you would like to, how you would like that others see you, you can answer this question. But if we if we base it on research, 92% in the area of non-for-profit state that the most important factor when selecting a partner is brand alignment. So what does brand alignment mean? Ultimately it means what degree a partnership may fit or may not fit. Do you share the same vision, mission or beliefs with your partner? Are your goals aligned? How, how will you complement your partner's mission? What are you doing to help them achieve their goals? Well, that sounds like something that you can put on paper somewhere on your mission or vision statement on your website, and it's, they can read it. But the reality is that no one will actually start to read who you are, what you do, what your goals are, what you accomplished in the past, if you do, do not create any, any first impression, any awareness, if you do not raise interest in the first moment you, you meet somebody or somebody is on your, on your website, on your social media account, or in person. So, I picked a simple example of the Pisa website that we have designed starting last year and uh, that went live at the beginning of this year. And I remember that we, we had quite a lot of discussions of not how it, how it should look like in the first place. Rather, we discussed what information, what feeling, what does it need to convey for our, for Tafisa's partners, for Tafisa's partners and potential partners for the future. So, we have the bold statement for an active world, we have the news feed, we have the colors, we have Take Baker Street, that's logo. All of these elements were not just picked randomly. Um, the background photographer, for instance, served as kind of an imagery that this is, this is not just someone, an organization that has a vision. <coughs> Tafisa really, really is a movement. Is someone, is, is an organization that creates something that starts and then continues on its own. So it really changes behavioral patterns. And the same with the newsfeed. It's not meant to be just latest news if compared to what you see on Google or somewhere else. It's meant to, to show that this, this has global impact. This is not just a small organization or regional organization in Germany, located in Germany or around the world. It's, it's, it's really, it really has global impact. And um, if you look at those examples we have right here, you see that it's, it's more branded as a movement. So again, branding really needs to tell your story on its own because what I've shown you just right now is probably what the first, first impression will look like if you, if you see the website of an organization. Um, probably you will scroll one or two times and then you will probably uh, make your impression. So, the second challenge is then if you made your branding, if you made your website, if you made your claims, you made one piece. And the other part, the other part of the story is to make a cohesive, to create a cohesive story that works across all of your all of your pieces of content, pieces of how would you say, print materials, social media accounts, photographies, the people that talk for you, etc. So this is a brochure we created for the Take Picker Streets, Take Picker Future program. 
And um, of course, it does not carry the FISA's mission or vision or all the projects or the achievements from the past. But if you, if you scan it quickly, um, I'm sure that you would realize that um, it conveys the mission and the vision of the impact of this organization and, and how um, Tafisa would like that others see the organization. So after all, it's really that you will be judged based, based on your ability to have an impact. This is, if you compare it to profit organizations, the branding is much more intangible. It's much more about creating a perception of why product A is superior than product B. It's, you, you cannot really see the difference why some product is different. By, but if you look at, if you look at Sport for All or, or charity or causes, we really, we really can understand that we can see that it's measurable what our success is and what our metrics should be. And you have less than 50 seconds to tell your story. To tell your story of how you will impact on society and how your measurable success will impact your partner's mission or cause positively, um, which is the most important measure for success. So 76% stated that if you want to work with someone from charity, or an industry that has a cause that, that, that follows, it's really about your ability to impact your partner's mission in a successful and positive way. Okay, so far we did theory, but how do we brand impact? How do we brand impact in the area of sport for and physical activity? Well, in the last two, two, two days here, I heard a lot about vision, long-term missions, ideas for the future, and what, um, what needs to be done. And I also heard that we need to stop talking, and we need to do more. It's, we need action. And uh, on the next slide, on the next slide, uh, I've selected an example from UNICEF. It's one of the tweets from last, from one of two weeks ago, I think. And it's actually how I would like that every organization in Sport for All or that has a good cause um, would brand its impact. Because it really shows that uh, you, you, not just, you, you do not just talk, you show your impact. So you see photography of, of a young child and another person giving, giving him or her a vaccine. And, uh, and the text is, if I hadn't come here today, he could have died. For me, this is impact. It's impact for the cause. It shows progress. It shows that it would have been different if they would not, would not have been there at the moment. But it doesn't have to be that dramatic. This is another example of an infographic we created for UNICEF. And uh, it's, not, it's not as dramatic as the previous one, but it shows a sense of urgency. So obesity increased in two out of three high-income countries. We're talking about rich countries, high-income countries around the world. And uh, the branding here looks similar like the previous one. It positions UNICEF as not just as someone who cares, but also someone who researches is using, using data to create and uh, to inform, using data to make aware, to raise awareness for causes they, they wish would be changed in the future. And um, And if you talk about branding for a cause, it's really about social media. Today, 30% of our online time is spent on social media. And if you want to raise awareness for your impact, raise awareness that so that sponsors and supporters see that you have a timeline, that you have a timeline of 
action, vision, mission, and that you really do something and do not just have a mission, then you need to, you need to use social media. So this is an example we did for, for Tefisa, where we uh, made a video for Take Pick Your Streets, Take Pick Your Future. And it does not only show that Tafisa has the data, wants to make, wants to create awareness about the inactivity epidemic, it also is about using emotion and using social media to raise awareness and to reach their, su reach their um, supporters and potential sponsors on social media. This is another example. Similar, it's about using data to raise awareness for um, pollution in cities. And yeah, if you if you use social media to brand for your cause, you need you, you need to you need to make sure that every piece subtly shapes your brand, and every piece needs to add to your brand and to your vision and to your mission and how you would like to see that others see your brand in the future. So you really have to make sure that this is a cohesive, cohesive strategy that is told. Thank you.